Remember the times when poodle skirts swayed at sock hops and families gathered around the TV for howdy duty? Relive these iconic moments and more in 10 Things Only Baby Boomers Remember. In the first half of the 20th century, polio was a frightening and devastating disease. The polio virus could attack the nervous system and lead to partial or full paralysis, forcing some patients to rely on iron lung machines to breathe. In 1955, after years of research and testing, Dr. Jonas Salk developed the first safe and effective polio vaccine at the University of Pittsburgh. When the polio vaccine was made widely available, it dramatically reduced new cases of the disease in the United States. Mass vaccination campaigns encouraged parents to have their children immunized with a new polio vaccine. The arrival of the polio vaccine was a remarkable scientific achievement that transformed life for families in the 1950s. Poodle skirts became a fashion trend among teenage girls in the 1950s. These swing skirts got their name from the poodle embroidery that decorated them. Poodle skirts were typically worn to sock hops, which were informal dance parties popular amongst high school students. Sock hops were named for the gym floors that students danced on in their socks, and they featured the new rock and roll music. For many teens in the post-war era, donning a poodle skirt and dancing the night away at a high school sock hop represented carefree youth. Poodle skirts and sock hops encapsulate the iconic fashions and activities that flourished in the 50s teen culture. Drive-in movie theaters first opened in the 1930s and became hugely popular in the 1950s and 1960s. At drive-ins, moviegoers could watch films from the comfort of their own cars. Speakers on posts next to parking spaces broadcasted the movie audio as audiences tuned into the right radio frequency. Drive-ins provided a new way for families to see movies together. They also became a popular spot for young couples to enjoy a date night without breaking the bank. For many, driving up to the big screen and watching a blockbuster film under the stars was a classic American pastime. The children's television show Howdy Doody debuted in 1947 and ran through 1960. It featured a freckle-faced marionette puppet named Howdy Doody and his human friend Buffalo Bob Smith. Howdy Doody took place in a circus setting called Dootyville, which also included puppets like Mr. Bluster and Flubadub. The show encouraged kids to sing and dance along to cheerful songs and silly sketches. Many baby boomer children eagerly tuned in to watch Howdy Doody after school every weekday. The popular show is remembered for being one of the pioneers of children's programming in the early days of broadcast television. In the 1950s and 60s, 45 RPM vinyl records were the dominant format for recorded music. The small records with the big holes spun at 45 revolutions per minute, allowing for a single song on each side. The 45 RPM format gained popularity after RCA Victor released the first 45s in 1949. Top record labels like Motown and Atlantic used 45s to distribute hit singles by popular artists. Record players with automatic changers could stack and play multiple 45s in a row. For music fans during the era, collecting and playing the latest 45 RPM records was an integral part of youth culture. The Slinky was invented in 1943 by mechanical engineer Richard James. It is a simple spring toy that can perform entertaining tricks. When stretched out and released, a slinky will seem to walk down steps or flip over itself. In 1945, Gimbel's department store sold the first 400 slinkies, which immediately became a huge fad. In the 50s and 60s, slinkies were a popular toy for children of the baby boomer generation. With its ability to stretch, bounce, and coil itself back up, the classic slinky has provided simple fun for over 70 years. During the Cold War era, duck and cover drills became routine in American schools. When the alarm sounded, 
students were instructed to duck under their desks and cover their heads with their arms. These emergency drills were practiced in case an atomic bomb was dropped on the city. Sheltering under desks was thought to protect children from debris, radiation, and the blast shock waves. Of course, in reality, school desks provided very limited protection from a nuclear attack. While largely ineffective, duck and cover drills underscored the threat of atomic destruction that haunted the nation in the post-war years. The Ed Sullivan Show was a hugely popular variety program that ran on CBS from 1948 to 1971. Each Sunday night, host Ed Sullivan presented a mix of comedians, musicians, dancers, actors, or other performers. In 1964, Sullivan made television history when he featured The Beatles on three record-shattering episodes. The Ed Sullivan Show helped introduce American audiences to groundbreaking acts like Elvis Presley and the Supremes. With its eclectic lineup and massive viewership, The Ed Sullivan Show became a Sunday night tradition for many families. During its historic 23-year run, Sullivan's Variety Hour left an indelible mark on American pop culture. Soda fountains were popular features of drugstores and diners in the 1940s through the 1960s. Behind the counter, a soda jerk would prepare and serve carbonated sodas, ice cream floats, sundaes, and other treats. Sitting at the soda fountain counter provided a place for friends to socialize while enjoying a yummy snack. Milkshakes and malts were thick, creamy drinks prepared in a metal cup by hand-mixing flavored syrups and milk. Soda fountains declined as fast-food restaurants rose in popularity, and pre-made soda became available. For teens and families of the era, visiting the corner soda fountain holds treasured memories of a classic American tradition. In the late 1950s, the United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a space race to launch the first human into Earth's orbit. NASA selected seven men for its Project Mercury, America's first human space flight program. On May 5, 1961, astronaut Alan Shepard became the first American in space aboard the Freedom 7 spacecraft. The suborbital flight lasted only 15 minutes but was an historic accomplishment. Shepard's success came soon after the Soviet Union launched the first human, Yuri Gagarin, into space. NASA's feat showed America's progress in the high-stakes contest to demonstrate spaceflight capability and supremacy. If you enjoyed this journey back in time, go ahead and watch the next video. And remember to like and subscribe. It's the American way.